Hi everyone, welcome to part two of A Voice of Truth for Madeleine McCann. In this one we'll recap on some of the things but I will also start to be inputting more of my intuitive um, messaging but also my takes. Um, I tried to remain very neutral in the last one and I'm going to still try to remain very neutral. I don't have a particular thing that I... I don't have a particular person or people in mind that have caused... First, we're going to dive into is Madeleine dead? I'm going to pull tarot cards on that. Um, and also, I'm not going to dive into along the lines of whoever keeps coming forward that they are Madeleine growing up in a different country. I've, I'm not buying into that. Never bought into it. I don't even know who the latest one is. I think about a year ago, maybe a couple of months ago. Um, I'm not even looking into that. I'm happy to pull a tarot card, but it's not my gut feeling. Just like yesterday, I discussed the prisoner. Um, CB. As soon as I had the New Year's bulletin, I felt um, nothing would relate to uh, he was not involved. Okay, and I've not pulled tarot cards on that, but that's my gut instinct, and that's why I also got rattled. And then after looking, as I said, three days of looking into this via um, you know what's out there by. Uh, detectives that were interviewed um, as a credible journalist who dedicated her time on this case beyond her own work or trying to be a journalist for the case um, and other things and I've got about six more hours of footage stuff saved that I want to look into um, but what I am going to do is to recap what we went through yesterday go through some points. I will end up then doing some questions with the tarot pool. I'm going to give you some insights to things that I felt have aligned or come to me, like I said. And if in this one, Maddie comes through to start some channeling with her, then I think it's time to do that. I've been called to. And then we can do, I'm looking into doing a little bit more on what makes sense, what doesn't make sense, looking at a bit more of the interviews that the McCanns have been in, uh, maybe the, um, I believe the Portugal police, there's reports there to look into, and we can come back to inv investigative facts and then do some more tarot card reading, intuitive reading and channeling as well. So let's do that and let's see how this part goes. Um, Again, no hate will be tolerated in the comments. This is, the reason I'm doing this is, obviously it's come to me, it was never on my, it's not been a case I've followed. Like I said to you, it was a news bulletin. It's not been a case from the time she went missing that I followed. I didn't understand how much was coming. I just knew that every now and then I'd hear about Maddie. I knew there was a Netflix thing that came up. Um, program that came up. I didn't know until the three days that I was looking into this that actually the Netflix program the parents said was not helpful and they didn't know why it was actually put out but I don't know why they have a strong opinion about that. Um, obviously it's their own reasoning but for me if I was a mother I would not have a strong opinion of it. Um, I'd just be like whatever needs to be out in the public for my child to come back or for me to know what's happened to my child. Um, so by being pushed to spirit and then also like I said um, I had after it come to me my crown chakra after um, in the evening and over then the whole next day into another day was just absolutely immense um, and I think there's two reasons for that. One of the reasons we're going to dive into in a question of the tarot. Another reason I'll also explain. Um, but I do this for healing. It's not something that I plan to do, honestly. It was not something that I was even thinking to start to work into. But Maddie's come through. I had the sub come through. And I think that came through to me because of 
um, the teen or late teen boy and then Maddie come through and uh, Nicola Bully was coming through um, and I was, you know, I'm still of belief that acts, acts, forget Nicola, but I believe some things in life are not to be, um, can happen uh, that don't make sense to our human brain, okay? Um, just because there's a larger universe uh, amongst us, but there's reasons why these individuals um, or spirit is pushing me, my angels and spirit guides are pushing me in this direction. And I mentioned in a clip that I wonder if it's something to do with the element of the sea. Um, I'm also going to do something on Britney Spears. I'm really concerned. I have been for a very long time. It's something that's come up and that's just going to be tarot card reading. Um, and I think, you know, her book's coming out in October. There's a critical period right now. But I think there's a disconnect of a few things that I also want to put out there. But it's kind of like getting stuff straight because... So many people, like I said, jump on the bag wagon of doing these things and I think it's very delicate things that you should not be just putting out there. I take it really, really serious as you can see how many couple of months that has taken me to really say, okay, I've got to now. Um, and it's been in my mind all the time. And like I said, it's not actually down the route of what was my focus. My focus is still energy healing, um, the personalized readings I do, the spiritual coaching I do, but I'm also a fitness and yoga teacher and also a transformation mindset coach as well. Um, but the energy healing, the tarot, the personalized spiritual coaching and um, this element I feel is really, really important. And I was starting to go into shamanism. Um, but it's digressed into this way and I'm following it. I'm, I'm, I'm following what comes through to me. Um, going back to the reason and the voice of truth, when I was uploading um, the eight minute video that you saw the other day, um, I was just gonna put just how people put mediumship interview with Maddie McCann, or you know whatever it is and it was come to me it's actually it's a voice of truth okay so i put a voice of truth and it seems like that's what i'm being called to call these readings of mine so that's what i have done even though i wasn't even planning for a title um the other thing is so many children go missing there's a wider lesson and there's something behind this that I think is needing to come to the forefront and I think we're not 20 years ago where war can be pulled over our eyes and I think there's there is deeper lessons here there's something that needs to come to the forefront and I can feel that I so far have not cleared that I might feel it when I pull tarot cards there's something beyond this the second reason is um obviously as um when a person passes away and leaves their physical body, they go on a journey of a life review, like they say, and then there's a healing area before, you know, move on to heaven. Um, obviously, your beliefs are very different and everyone's welcome to their own beliefs. I feel like, although, you know, like I said, the channel and I saw seven years ago, I can't really remember it, but she wouldn't open up. Um, I think... What I'm getting, and I will pull tarot cards because I've not really asked Maddie this, that there's an essence of her that just can't let go of being anchored here. And I believe, I believe that. I, so, you know, there are beliefs that, you know, even when someone passes away, you need to clear their debts. You need to try and just pay off everything, clear everything for them. And I believe that. Don't let them anchor on earth. And there's so many children that have gone missing and so you could say, well, there's so many children that maybe are still anchored. That's very true. But as we can see, this keeps coming up. So even if somebody's passed away and they're going through the healing, they will know what the justice is going to come. But right now, if you think about it, depending on who was involved, I don't think Maddie's soul can fully rest. And I'm going to come to how I think this is also going to be found 
or justice is going to be given to the case. Um, and we're going to pull tarot cards as well. So I'll be pulling tarot cards and I'll also be confirming my thoughts. So there's an, there's an element of a healing that I, I want these videos to be given to Maddie through the voice of truth, allowing her the platform because I also feel her voice has not been heard. Her voice has not been heard. So that's my whole purpose, you know, give a soul a rest, allow it to rest, allow it not to be anchored and released. And I think maybe part four, we will look into again, the investigations once I've looked at them. Um, there is, like I said, there's, there's going to be a little bit on, uh, there's going to be other, there's others that are waiting on me right now. It's also, like I said, Nicola Bully and also Brittany. But the way I will do it is I will be looking at um, Nicola Bully a little bit, but I'm not going to do like the three days and maybe see if a day comes to me for, even if it's tomorrow to channel, then I will do that. And then I'll look further into it, but I'll pull tarot cards. But I hope yesterday and today presents to you where I've looked into investigations so that I can bring knowledge and we try to neutralize things. And as we go along, we can build up what direction we believe it's going into. So even yesterday when I discussed about body language, I didn't really indicate much of what I agreed to and what I didn't, but I did say there was gaps. Like for example, um, the father, Jerry saying, you know, what's done is done. The mother saying about the book and the birthday. Um, when I'm trying to read their energy, I said the father was very tense, very composed. They probably rehearsed the interview very much okay. Uh, like who's going to answer? I still believe as physicians, yes, they can compose themselves and I'm giving that benefit of doubt, but I've not seen, I think the mother has broken down at one point in some of the interviews. I'm going to be looking at a few more, um, but not to answer 40. Um, I've got the actual question because I know I mentioned it yesterday. There's 48 questions the Portuguese police asked and she only answered one. During 11 hours of interrogation, Kate McCann refused to answer 48 specific questions. Madeline's mother, who is legally represented in the interview, stayed silent as police threw a series of loaded questions at her that made her made it clear that she thought she was involved in her daughter's disappearance. And the only question that she did answer was the last one. Are you aware that not answering questions, you are jeopardizing the investigation, which seeks to discover what happened to your daughter? And the answer was yes, if that's what the investigation thinks. That's the question I touched base on yesterday. Let me know in the comments. Would you answer them? Yes, you can take it personal. Let's say you are innocent, you're not innocent, but you are 100% innocent, right? And I'm not saying there was an intention behind what's happened. I think a lot of us um, disagree with that. You still answer. You're gonna answer if you wasn't involved because everything you say can help lead to the investigation. Now, the other time frame that I want to put in place is I mentioned, I don't understand and it's not clear from me, even though I've done three days. Did the parents all take it in turns every half an hour? Or was they um, each one checking on their own children? Because the others had babies as well. I'm going to be looking into that. I'm going to be looking into more of the body language. Going back to the body language, the father is tense. There is a bit of ego. That could be the physician side of him. Um, just yesterday I was looking at a bit more and he's not a cardiologist surgeon like some people said he could be a surgeon, he could be a cardiologist. He's actually a cardio specialist and he also is a specialist around the scanning as well. So I don't think he does heart surgery, but obviously a very sharp intellectual person. And he did um, sports science and physiology and then obviously I think he got his master's in science. Kate, they, there's things that she's an, an anesthesiist, um, not quite sure, but she did medical science as her degree, okay? Um, I, I, I mentioned about Kate's birth date, which was the 5th of March, 1968. J 
juries I could find. I'm going to be looking into that as well. I mentioned about numbers that I felt were significant around this that were just coming to me during, you know, when I said, okay, I'm going to look into this. It was um, five, eight, three, five, eight. Okay. And then we got the three card when I pulled, um, should I work on this? I think in the tower, we're going to get a couple of seven cards come through and I'll explain why I think that's coming through. Um, if we look at um, what's interesting, we look at Kate's birthday, five, March is the third. I've just realized that. And then, you know, uh, Maddie was three. I mentioned some of these and I think we're going to have a bit more around that. Five was the apartment they were in. And I'm going to come to the A because there's something that was coming to me about the A. Um, Another thing is after I posted that video, the eight minute, the same, same evening, I was getting something about a small bracelet, a small bead, uh, you know, a bracelet that could have a few beads or beaded. Um, I was sensing that it's um, Maddie's, all right? Still not sure what's relevant to that, but I do know that when afterwards I opened my YouTube to check my channel, um, the first thing on there was something about um, uh, uh, someone had posted, I don't even know who it was or what, it, what this was relevant, but it was a, a thread with three beads of blue. I'm not sure if it was blue actually now, but I believe it was blue. And the reason I say I'm not sure if it's blue because while I was thinking also of colours, I know that I think they mentioned Maddie Ma would have either, a lot of people presumed she would like pink or she would or her parents, maybe Kate said about pink, or that colour toy was pink, pink was relevant. But I was actually getting a pale blue. Maybe that's her aura, but that's what I was getting. A pale blue is significant. Um, and I'm just gonna write these down, because as we recap, when we're going along, and know something that, um, when you channel some spirit, or when you channel to get divine messages from your own spirit, guys, um, there's going to be different things to cover. As you can see, it's already 17 minutes and I've just done a recap adding on to yesterday. So a lot of things will be uh, crossed over. Um, now, so there's things that I'm still going to look into, but I'm going to dive into that after we've done some channeling, tarot, intuitive reading. Um, I mentioned, uh, yeah, the body language. So Jerry is, does have that sort of ego side to him. Um, I'm not relaxed when I look into his eyes. Uh, uh, Kate, I can't see into her eyes. It's very strange. But there is either, when she was younger, there's either she's had an injury to her face where some of her eye is down. Or well, there's a great sadness from maybe her soul contract knowing that or being haunted about something around this before even the event happened. There's a great weight of sadness there. Okay. Um, she's she's quite aloof in, in the presence. Like, she looks really sad. She doesn't look remorseful. They both don't look remorseful. Although I feel the father looks more... Uh, defensive. There's an, other words that are coming through that I don't know should I should mention, but like this guilt, this trickster. The mother is a bit aloof. I feel like she's disconnected. Like you can't get into her energy. And I wonder if that's to do with maybe antidepressants or stuff like that, which you would take if you, you know, maybe was in that situation. But that's, there's a block there. Um, and despite them being maybe physicians, which one giving the benefit of the doubt because you're, you're used to being composed, etc. There's things that I've touched base on that are just kind of like there's, a lack there there's a lack there's a lack and there's gaps and we'll go into it a bit more and I'm being very careful in what I say and I still want us to go into the tarot 
in um, a neutral perspective. I don't even know, like, let's go to the dogs, the cadaver dogs, right? These are famous dogs that are star dogs, not like famous superstars. They're famous for the caliber of finding blood. One of them's blood, one is smelling death. And I couldn't understand initially did they smell, people said they smelled blood, but then they said, you know, cadaver is actually smelling human death. And then if what was stated that the children were sedated, and that's how one of them died, or that's how Maddie could have died if it was an accident in that apartment, and that's what the Portugal police stated, then what is the blood? Or is it that they actually found, they both smelt the remains and it wasn't blood, but blood is what, you know, because dogs usually smell blood, that's what is coming through. They'll be looking into that, but I know then that also, I think they both, they both do the same thing, but a bit different. So that needs to be looked into, because there was something about behind the sofa. So if she's, if she was sedated and she actually died maybe from an overdose, but she was supposed to be in the bed, but then behind the sofa. And if behind the sofa, the statement is that there was blood. You see where I'm going to look into stuff a bit more as well. Um, but not only look into stuff because it's mixed. You, I need to keep looking and looking and gathering what makes sense and bring it to us. So they had pointed out the sofa in that room in the apartment 5A, apartment 5A in uh, Pereira de, la, de Luz, right? I'm going to call it de Luz because it's easier for me to get the first word um, in Portugal. The car at the door and in the boot, the cuddle cat. Now, when I was looking at the setup of the apartment, the sofa's under the window. And I'm not really sure where the bed is either, you know, the bed from there, but the sofa's under the window. Um, I mentioned yesterday about are the doors locked? Are they not locked? If you did lock them, this. If you didn't lock them, this. And then what is being said is that actually the thought is that someone came through the window and abducted Maddie and left through the window. But the balcony door, at first they said everything was locked, then they said actually the balcony door was unlocked. If you are looking at that, you're going to try the balcony door first because it's a lot easier. You know, you're not going to shake the trial too much. So that's something else. What I understand is there was no fingerprints or sign of breakage from outside the window. There's no sign of breakage at all, but from the window, there's no sign of breakage. And fingerprints in the window was from the inside and were Kate's when apparently she opened uh, because she felt the window has been opened. So she pushed, actually, she just opened it a little bit to see what happened and pushed it closed, knowing apparently her story is that the window was ajar. Um, or maybe they, they're open like that. Um, and I looked at where it was. I looked where the tapas is. And I'm going to also look into uh, dates and stuff like that. I mentioned about maybe the coverage it's had from people, uh, kind of elite status people, the amount of millions of pounds spent on this. Um, the new recent news of May, which actually is relevant to two, three years ago and pre prior to that. I mentioned about Operation Grange taking over, but only taking over as a, an abduction. And what I've known is now is an abduction based in the looking at it from the UK. So even let's say it's because the law is if someone's not found dead, then you take it as an abduction. Um, don't you have to be visiting the place of it? And there was only two visits in 2017 to 2018 um, from Operation Grange. I mentioned about the Chief Constable um, Investigator in the London Met and his name is Colin. 
where I don't mention names, it's just to keep it as it is, but I hope you trust that, what I've looked into. So let's go back to the abduction, right? There's been th theories that someone wanted to kidnap or kidnapped Maddie because they wanted a child. If you want a child or a baby of your own, won't you take the younger one who's not likely to remember what's happened? Or would you take the toddler? That probably doesn't even, you know, you've got more chance of a baby just being seen as a baby and not anyone saying, oh, they look like you, as opposed to a toddler, someone who's starting to have their own features. That might not even, is not likely to look like you. So that's a question. And again, there was no sign of coming in. The other thing would be a paedophile. So a paedophile, um, again, what happened behind the sofa? Are they going to do something to the child in the house? Then there would be DNA all over the place, you know, of what was happening. Are they taking the child? Okay, so they uh, either ran down the road with the child and we know that the day before in the morning, there was an innocent man carrying his child who apparently um, the next day they were told by one of the seven tapas friends that they had that she'd seen a man carrying a thing, but she didn't tell a, a, a child, but she didn't tell the parents because she felt that they would worry. But the next day she did because she was certain that it was Maddie. Again, don't make sense. Um, the other thing just before I forget is I'm not really sure like if you want to take strand tests for someone who's been sedated which they which was proven that the toddlers were not sedated although it was claimed would that still be present in their hair strands after what is it two three days I don't know when did they retire by a couple of days for the UK to test? That's another question I have. Um, so the paedophile is likely to do whatever they need to do and then probably dump the body. Or they're gonna drive away and then dump the body. I don't think the paedophile is gonna keep a child in their possession because it will take a lot to look after that child. And they also often, for periods, watch what they want to do. And abduction, obviously, parents are not going to kidnap the child. And the Operation Grange is looking at an abduction, which means that it's disregarding interviewing the parents. There's something else about, you know, leaving Portugal quite soon after. Um, okay, fine, you want to start, um, you want to, I don't know, try to get back to normal, or the kids want to get back to normal. Wouldn't you, one parent, take them back if you have to go back? One parent stays on top of the police because that is where the abduction or whatever happened. To me, it's some, it's vanished. Abduction. You know, there's no proof of a production, yet that is the word being thrown around. We're not throwing around uh, accident by murder or murder. We're not throwing around anything else. But there is a banishment here. Um, the other thing that I found a bit strange is that the mother wanted to visit the Pope the same night, which I find a bit strange. Um, and then, you know, obviously the, one of the seven friends who had seen the man walking with a girl didn't inform, uh, the parents until the next day because when actually Maddie had gone missing because she said that she didn't want them to worry. Um, the visiting of the apartments of the children while they're at dinner every half an hour doesn't even make sense to me, even though they insist on it because... You can't even enjoy or relax every half an hour going, you know, you can't even eat during that time. Um, and 
they're very insistent on timings uh, i'll get into that in the next one as well a lot of children go missing i think normally what's spent is like 105 1500 1500 on a child this has got millions um again like i said sedated and there's blood that needs clearing um I've mentioned about the signs I got. Now, number five is also the 5A, the door, okay. And I'm gonna look into the DOB, like I said. Um, I said about the blue. Now, when I was thinking about A, I'm like, suddenly AKA came to me after, like a, a day before I did part one. A is significant, it's in capital. And then I was thinking, because I feel like Maddie looks like her mum. I was like, A, is that the middle name of Kate? Is that Maddie's middle name? Maddie's middle name is Beth. I don't know Kate's middle name. Is it the grandparent? It's like, Maddie looks like an Amy. And I left it there and I was thinking, who is an Amy? Is it the grandparent? Is it just something? And then I said, let me check the siblings. And that's how I knew they were a boy or a girl, because obviously you just get told that they were twins. A lot of it is just twins. And one of the siblings, the girl is called Emily, Amelie, A-M-E-L-I-E. -E. Now, I'm not sure if this ties in with how I feel justice is gonna be brought to this case. Um, I'm gonna be pulling tarot cards. So I think what we'll do now is I'll just make sure that I've gone through most of what I wanted to go through for this one and then I'll get more facts. I mentioned that, you know, I think all all leads should always be investigated. Um, I mentioned about the bracelet. There was a Dr. Mark Perlin, a specialist DNA in this field, who offered to be solicited on the case and that was rejected. Again, the funding's in question for me. Um, I'm getting something about three years because of the number three. And also uh, when I looked at, when I was trying to tie in three years, three years is three, three and a bit years is actually when um, Kate and Jerry will go through their Saturn return, which is very big. So we'll get to that as well. Um, and I'm going to just start pulling cards now and we'll get more into the facts as, as we need to. Okay.